this this could like make or break our friendship real quick. Oh, okay. Okay. Can I start? So, would cool. you rather give ninety nine percent of the blowjob or the last one percent? <laughs> uh, who's listening to this podcast? No, you have, to answer. you have to answer. I don't. Um. Okay. Uh. I'm not doing the last one for Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. It's not happening. That's just okay. not happening. You know what I mean? This, yeah. No. no, no I'm good. Definitely, I'm cool. Thanks. I definitely no. I definitely wouldn't want that either. Yeah. No shot. Because no. I just don't want the feeling of a. Uh, nope. I. You know what? Yeah. I, I don't want to imagine the sensation on that. Could you just <laughs> like <laughs> like I'm good. Like I'm no. Like, that's it. I'm good. I saw this. I saw this one video where the guy was talking about it. And he goes, Yeah, I definitely take the one. The last one. No percent. shot. No chance. He goes, I'd rather have the last one second of somebody going inside you than having to suck dick for however long it is. No. I'm like, I just, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't do that. I, no. No, I don't. No, I I couldn't. I personally just don't think I could imagine. Also, the fact that you've hyped that question up all day and then asked me about, like, (laughs) Just, it's a just good so question, though, was it not? He, he's been telling me that he's had a question to ask it was, me it since, was like, question. 1 p.m. It was a good question. Like, I woke up at noon and at 1, he was like, But it was a good ask. question, was it not? We're recording this at midnight. It's, it, it was a good question, was it not? It definitely made me think, I'll tell you it that. Def, it, yeah, it did. Right? It made me think. Yeah. Like, but, yeah, no. Like, no, I'm, I wouldn't no. either. No. No. And on that question, if you'd rather take the last 1%, you are no longer allowed to podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, Chestnut Checkers. I'm your host, Jacob Tarbley. <laughs> And I'm Logan. And this is our podcast where we talk about, you know, whatever's going on in the world or in our lives or previously in our lives, I guess. And uh, a lot of story times, a lot of uh, current events, sports stuff, just things going on in the world, stuff that we'll talk about, you know, throughout the podcast. Hopefully doing three three of these a week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You know, if we're going to miss something, you guys can follow us on our social medias. I'm sure they'll be linked down below. Of course, um, of course. You know, or if I'm sure a lot of the people who are watching this probably know or whatever. So we'll post on our social medias if we're going to be missing an episode, but that shouldn't happen very often. Um, but yeah, we're going to try to go three three a week, go Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We're going to try to incorporate some sort of um, some sort of Friday episode where you guys can send in questions or send in suggestions for things you want us to talk about or stories. You know, a lot of the people who are going to watch this are going to be friends of ours who, who know a lot of stories. So if they want to hear us talk mm-hmm. about those, you can um probably on fridays you know we'll, we'll mix it up every week but we'll let you guys know on social media if you know we need questions or stuff like that um you guys can let us know and then we'll talk about it once a week yeah so. should be fun you know a lot of a lot of good topics you know i post on my instagram what was it last no free promise. last week um and i got a lot of good questions some of them was you know mental health um that's a and big then, one especially nowadays that's a really big one yeah and then Next one was bleached assholes, but we'll, well let's get yeah, that we one. We don't need to talk about that um, one. No, nope. but then it was like a lot of horoscopes. Yeah. Also, how the fuck did we which... get on this table? How did we get so far away from the middle? But it's fine. I have no idea. But if you know me personally, you know I think horoscopes are kind of, kind of complete bullshit. But um, that's my opinion. And so we can do horoscopes. A lot of people said sports, sports analytics. Yeah, we're talking about a lot of sports. Yeah, sports, about a lot of sports. yeah, you know we're pretty. I'd say pretty good, pretty well versed in yeah, the uh, sports, sports industry. Well, at least sure. you more than me. I'm strictly baseball and maybe a little bit basketball, and football. Yeah. You, Hardcore into football and baseball and a lot of stuff I don't know. So Logan Speaking of football, I do want to talk about the trade today. Oh, the Dolphins That trade? does want to – yeah, yeah was, I, do I know because we did talk about that on my phone, bit. by the way. I will, I will get yeah. that up for you. But um, speaking of uh, people taking the world by storm, how about Jack Leiter, though? Bro, Jack Leiter's the Andy pitcher. His last 16 innings, he has like – I think he had 16 strikeouts in his no-hitter – Last no, Saturday no against hitter. South Carolina. No right? hitter against – And then top tonight, going into the Friday season. night. He's throwing seven innings with ten strikeouts and didn't give up a hit again. So in his last sixteen innings, not giving up a hit and has twenty six strikeouts. Super. That's insane. Crazy. You know, it's hard to throw one no hitter oh, in crazy. any level of baseball, yeah. let alone at you know the highest level of baseball there is on the biggest stage. You know, obviously Vanderbilt baseball, mm. and to be able to just compete like that and play like that for not just nine straight innings, but to do it again for seven more innings. For sure. I no, still... it's it's super difficult. And especially, like, you know, if you're going and, you know, if you're a guy like Jack Leiter, and obviously the family pedigree, you know, his dad being, yeah. I don't know, is Al Leiter in the Hall of Fame? I don't know. But Al Leiter was a really good pitcher for a really yeah, long time. Yeah, he was time. on the Mets. You know, his dad was really good. Won really a World good. Series, I believe, with the Marlins. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know he was at least on the team around that time. I don't know if he necessarily yeah. won the World Series with them. Um, but, you know, family pedigree, really good. You know, Obviously, just being a baseball guy, you throw 97 and you can locate and have three plus breaking oh balls, God. you're yeah. going to be nasty. He's insane. But 
You know what I mean? Just being able to go out there and shove like that on a daily basis. And I think the scariest part about it for me is Jack Leiter's not their number one. Oh, yeah, no. Kumar Jack Leiter's not even the best pitcher on that staff, and Jack Leiter is Kumar Rocker is one of – he's he's probably one of the best baseball players There's... I've seen in a oh, while. Bro, and coming out of high school, he yeah. was nasty. He was Insane. supposed to go, you know, top five in the draft and then decided to go to Vanderbilt yeah, instead. Like, that doesn't happen. No, and then when you – when you forego that money, because if you get drafted in the top five, you're making five millions, millions plus. plus, right? If you forego that type of money to go to school, which, you know, obviously he promised his mom he was going to get his degree. Yeah, I respect that 100%. Comes. Yeah. But if you're going to pass up that, that money, kind of money, they can set your family up for a generation. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to back that up. And well, then, you know, there's, there's no better that, way, that no better way in college baseball than to go out and to back that up by throwing a no hitter on a super regional against Duke under the oh, lights yeah. on a Saturday night. Insane. That's nuts. What do you have, 15 Ks that game? 18. 18 Ks. 18, stri- 18 most, strikeouts. Most strikeouts ever in a game by any pitcher in Division One history. Nuts. Yeah. And to do it in a game like that, wasn't that an elimination game? Because Duke won the yeah, first game. Yeah, Duke won the first game 13 yeah. to 2. And then, and then he went out there and shoved and, and talked his shit the oh, yeah, whole game into the Duke dugout. I, I saw something was like even Duke like saw he was like on fire, and the and coaches were like calling timeout. timeouts mm-hmm. every other batter. And then they were taking their time out to the one field. of one of the dopest things I've ever seen in my life is after the seventh inning of that game in the Super Regional, Duke with two outs, their third base coach called a timeout and went and talked to the talked to the hitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He strikes out the last guy in the seventh inning, stares down the Duke manager, and says, call your meetings, bitch, and then walked back to the duck. <laughs> like, if you don't, if you do that and then give up a hit, you look like a, f- you're going to turn into the next, you're going to turn into the next Will Smith or whatever that guy's name was from, from Louisville. You're going to look like a dumbass. Oh, uh, Luke Smith. Luke Smith. Uh, Will Smith. To be fair. Will from the, uh. To be fair, yeah. Luke Smith diced up Bandy that whole year prior. But and then he fumbled did the bag on the biggest stage in the College World Series. Yeah, but if you like... can't compete under the lights, don't it don't matter. If you can do whatever you want in the regular season, if you get to the College World Series and a chance to put your team in the championship series, and you fumble the bag that hard, yeah. it don't matter what you did in the regular season. To be fair, care. Vandy was being held that whole game, and that offense last year was insane. They had who? Austin Martin, JJ Blade. Um, the first pitch Austin Martin saw in that yeah, College World Series, run. he put it three seventy five yeah, on left center defense. I think he had five home runs in the in the College World Series last year. Yeah, it was crazy. He's also an insane Vandy prospect. I would say the last three years with Vandy boys, oh for sure, have well, been the highest top tier ever, ever I've seen ever since Dansby. When Dansby went one oh, yeah. one, um, to the Diamondbacks. I mean, he's just been he started that. I think I was sixteen in twenty sixteen. He started that. Yeah. And then 17, 18, 19, ever, and even last year when they cut the draft to five rounds, and then Austin Martin goes fifth overall to the Blue Jays. Insane. That's insane. Yeah. And uh, in my opinion, Austin Martin was the best player in that draft. But oh he, no, he, I he definitely went five. Agree. That's fine. But like, yeah. you know, obviously pitching prospect, yeah, you're like gonna pitching. go first or whatever. Yeah. But because every just, team loves defense. I don't understand how Heston Kerstad went second to the Orioles when Austin Martin was on the board. It didn't make sense to me. To be fair, Heston Kerstad is one of the best well-rounded outfielders that I've seen in a while. The arm, the bat, the size. Like, okay, I get it. But where is he going to play? He's in outfield or first well, base. Well, no, I, I understand. But no, he also played third base for his, Arkansas, too. His primary position, the position he likes playing the best is right field. And in my opinion... Trey Mancini's a top ten right fielder in the league. Uh, Maybe I'm an idiot, but Trey, that could just be okay, that could so be the comeback just, story okay. we want. <laughs> he might be ten, but he's there. Trey Mancini is that good. When he's healthy, he's mm. that good. No, I have Joey Gallo over Trey Mancini for top ten. I mean, I don't see Joey Gallo as a right fielder. I just, he DHs. That's, that's all right. All right so I mean, personally. I think he maybe he's a top fifteen guy, but let's be real. A, a guy know, it's, coming it's definitely back, like, any anywhere from like eight to fifteen is real close. But like, okay, but, like let's be honest with ourselves. Trey Mancini has an amazing also, comeback the, story. The outfielders are really hard to rank because you know play right, play yeah, left, play center, center and left. But, yeah. but again, like you know, we have to be real. Coming back from Trey cancer, Mancini, though. Trey Mancini is You know, there's a lot of. You know, I mean, we're okay, take yeah, it it's, it's the same thing with Alex gonna... Smith. You know what I mean? Like Alex Smith goes out there and yeah. wins comeback player of the year. Now I, I. Alex Smith led his team to an to an NFL playoff spot this year. He did. Whether yeah, because he, you know. the quarterback they drafted, who was he? 
They didn't draft a quarterback last year. Or the, the quarterback they had that they got. Dwayne really, Haskins. And yeah. Then Dwayne he Haskins. He completely, like, just, shit the bed. Yeah, and then he, he didn't want to be there. Yeah, he started, uh, like, issue, going to strip clubs, trying to get kicked off the team. An issue with a lot of guys nowadays in the NFL, even happened with Isaiah Thomas recently. Um, Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Wilson, sorry. Okay, so a- Andrew cool. Thomas. Yeah. Um, Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Wilson. Um, kind of the same thing as Dwayne Haskins. You know what I mean? Like, they just... They don't go into the league with the right mindset. And, you know, Isaiah Wilson was a fantastic tackle talent. He was a very good tackle at Georgia, you know, opposite of Andrew Thomas. And uh, right next to Solomon Kinley. And so the Dolphins traded for him trying to see if they could get, you know, Isaiah Wilson and Solomon Kinley back, you know, on the same side of the line. And then he gets down to South Beach and, you know, Brian Flores and them and Chris Greer try to help him out. And he just doesn't want it. And you know what? Okay, like... They Mind tried. Of, uh, Johnny Manziel. Exactly. And, you know, it, ever Crazy since no. ever since stuff like that, it's just, it's been really hard. A lot of guys come into the league with the wrong mindset. A lot of guys come into the league and think, I have money, I can do whatever I want now. Personally? And unfortunately, it just doesn't work that way. I believe, okay, I know it's two different sports and we're crossing a bridge here, but I think it all started when they started seeing stars like James Harden. Yeah. You know, like say, That's I don't want to play. So I'm going to sit the bench, or I'm not going to go to practices, or I'm going to put on a fat suit before games. Okay, okay. So like, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm James saying, James Harden though? didn't put on a fat suit. No, but you know what I'm saying. That picture was quite obviously yeah. edited. No, but you know what I'm saying, though, right? I, yes. Like, I it's understand. the attitude of, I don't want to be here. We're not going to win games without me. We're not winning games with me. Yeah. I want out, and I'm going to cry and bitch my way out of this team if I have to. I think a lot of it comes down to... You know, unfortunately, our generation is soft, extremely soft. And, uh, yeah. you know, there's people A can't handle criticism and B can't handle like tough coaching. Like, yeah, like, and it's sad because that's only like the best kind of coaching. That, exactly. You know what I mean? The best coaches I've ever had are the coaches that were who the hardest would, on me. Yeah, the hardest on me would tell me how it is. They're not going to sugarcoat Sugar anything. Shit, yeah. And you know what? I, I succeeded under that. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, I. Obviously, I was never the best. I was never the most talented, that's for sure. But, you know what I mean? I I feel like there were a lot of guys who had more talent than me that didn't get to where I got to because they no, didn't have the right mindset. coaching and the right discipline. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mindset makes and breaks everything. For sure. I'll never forget that one, like this one Derek Jeter quote. It was like, there may be people that are more talented than you, but there's no excuse for them to work harder than you. I had that saved as my lock my lock screen, screen for two years. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that personally goes down as one of my favorite quotes. Yeah, there's there's always going to be people in life who have more talent. Always. There's always going to be people in life who Speaking are of which, you know. I have a perfect example for someone who's just talented out the ass for no reason. Hopefully, I hope this podcast finds him well, Kobe Mayo. You are the most god gifted person I know. Okay, no, Kobe's Kobe's gross. But I'd known this kid since we were in sixth grade. Sixth grade, he, in sixth grade, he was six foot what two. He was like six, hitting six home runs and shit against top teams in the nation because we were a top team in the nation, so we played those games against those teams. And you guys got carried by two Cubans, it's fine. We still had our catcher went to Tennessee. Our shortstop went to Louisville. Um. Our first baseman went somewhere. I forgot where he went. But still, regardless, we still play those top teams. So we know and we saw. And, you know, I'm not saying I was in the gym every day. You know, obviously, I still haven't been in the gym every day. But I'm not going to say that I was. I'm not going to say that I was the most hardworking kid. But I wasn't God gifted with six foot five abilities to swing a bat 100 miles per hour and stream Fortnite tournaments all day. You know, like, I, I wasn't gifted with I mean- that. I, don't know, I think it's one of those things like you look at, you look at Kobe, and you look at a guy like Timmy, right? Timmy uh, Manning, if you guys don't know. Timmy him, Manning, friend, too. he's a beast. He's worked hard for everything. Timmy and Kobe are both relatively in the same spot now. They both committed they both to came UF. Came up at the same time together. Um, Kobe obviously got drafted by the Orioles in the fourth round or whatever, third round, fourth let's, round, hundred overall. Timmy, okay, Timmy denied a top ten draft pick to go to UF. He no, he didn't get drafted. No, he no. He told him not to draft me. Oh well, yeah. He told him not to draft because the I'll never forget the day seventh grade. We just finished a scrimmage. Timmy's also really and, family oriented and wanted to go to yeah, for his mom. So he, yeah, he for... did. He's he's very like Christian, you know that kind of thing. 
So he came in the clubhouse, seventh grade, and he comes in with a UF hat on. Like, where the fuck did that hat come from? In seventh grade, I didn't even know what UF was, okay? Yeah, and to be fair, you still could never sniff UF even when you graduated, but it's fine. I drove past it one time, all right? Suck my dick. <laughs> so, um, uh, so he comes in with a UF hat on, and I'm like, what do you wear that for? He goes, oh, I have an announcement to make, guys. Stands at the front of the clubhouse. I just committed UF. Everyone else is like, turn him on. I'm like, I looked up what UF was. <laughs> I swear to God. I'm like, what is that? Yeah. Like, what? And then I, mean, I see it's like the they were like growing like top I think they were like thirtieth at the time. Yeah, because UF UF had a couple like, of years where they were just down. Yeah, and I'm looking, I'm like, D one big like we're in seventh grade, we still have high school, you know? Yeah. Well, but a lot of the time when you see nowadays, especially, there's a lot of guys who are committing really early. You see, oh you yeah, know, like especially seventh and eighth prospects. grade. Yeah, seventh. A lot well, of those. now you can be. The, 16, the day you, you turn 16, yeah, you can sign to a team, and which is absolutely is. nuts. But you see guys at, you know, 13 years old committing to D1 programs. And, nuts. It's and nuts. especially, you know, Speaking most words, guys don't don't stay. And yeah. the issue is like like Kobe, right? Kobe and Kobe, Kobe and Tim are two, two different, different things. Too. Kobe committed to UCF, and you knew damn well Kobe was not going to go to UCF. Yeah. I mean, realistically, Kobe he, his talent you, you could have so than that. you could have told me that Kobe was going to get drafted after his freshman year uh, high school, and I, I would have believed, believed you. Yeah, like, I, you know what I mean? It. But he's also one of those guys where mm-hmm. you know what he came up in a different way. He he got drafted. You know, he went and, and go and play baseball in good form. You know, Kobe, yeah. in my opinion, Kobe's going to be a really good player for a, a long time. I, if he works, if he, he could keeps be, trying. Yeah, you know if what he I mean? works at it, he could definitely. Kobe's one of the most talent, like pure talented talent. individuals Strike. I've ever been on a field with, right? Yeah. But he doesn't. He doesn't have the mindset yet. The difference with him and Timmy is that Timmy Timmy's got to UF. Timmy like got to grade. UF and put on twenty pounds of pure muscle and added three. He was already throwing 90, 92 throwing to 93. 94 as, as a freshman. Or as, as, a, as, a, no, as a freshman uh, in high school. Freshman in high school <laughs> he graduated right? topping 95. And then top 95 his senior year. And then got to UF. And his first pitch in fall on UF's mound was 97 out of his hand. He's never thrown that hard before in his life. Crazy. Right? And now he's, you know, I think he got a midweek start, you know, at the beginning of the year. He's one of their first guys out of the pen, especially lefty-lefty. Kobe's one of the best lefty lefty pitchers I've ever seen ever, right? That kid has a breaking ball that will put the kids in nuts. the dirt, like that on nuts. the floor. It's nuts. No, that curveball is it's special, dude. I, yeah. And he, his fastball is electric, everything. But then again, you know, like you said, the thing that separates Kobe and Timmy is, you know, Kobe sat at home streaming Fortnite, you know, chilling with his girlfriend, while Timmy was like, you know, I'm at the gym, I'm at the field, yeah, I'm working out. No, Timmy. Timmy's a different. Timmy. Player. Timmy did you know the play by play. The you know the gym, eat right, sleep right, yeah. work right, school right. You know, like he was. Sure. That kind oh, of and player. Timmy's also been extremely smart. Like he's oh, always yeah. been hella smart. Yeah, too. Timmy like, had straight A's every every quarter since I've known him. Yeah. Obviously, high school, you know, he parted ways, but three years that kid's never got a B. Yeah. No. That's nuts. I'm Those still three pissed. years, I never got an A. I'm still <laughs> pissed. About. In all of middle school, in every quarter. I got a B in the third quarter. No, in the second quarter of eighth grade math. Those were I was taking geometry as an eighth grader and got a B. <clears throat> I got an eighty-eight <laughs> in the second quarter. I I think it was the second quarter of eighth grade geometry and was pissed. I literally, this, I'm gonna make myself sound like an idiot. I cried the day that I got a B. I I cried because I, I got a B. In eighth grade geometry, I can't lie. I cried the first time I got a B two. Difference is mine was in fifth grade, (laughs) and then after that it was all downhill. Well, I don't think I sniffed the B until ninth grade. You (laughs) also grew up differently, and well, you grew up in Broward. Yeah, and so the difference between Broward schools and Palm Beach schools, and I don't a lot of you might not. I grew up in in Palm Beach, so my first yeah my first you know two years of elementary school kindergarten and first grade, um, I went to a school called Golden Grove Elementary. And it's up in Palm Beach, and Palm Beach elementary schools have grades, like letter grades, A, B, C, whatever, right? Um, so did Margate Elementary. No, in in Margate, they had it uh, third, fourth, and fifth grade 
you got letter grades. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, but in kindergarten, first, and second, you got ones, twos, and threes. Now it makes my thing sound less impressive. I only had straight A's for two years of my life then. <laughs> wow. Okay, yeah. But, but like, so I... I came to, like, second grade or whatever, and then I went to a charter school when I came down here, and so obviously yeah. it was a little different there anyway. Um, but I got ones and twos on my first report card for, like, the first quarter of second grade, and I was, like, I, I went to my mom, and I was like, Mom, like, what's this? Like, I, I don't yeah. know what this is. Because like I had always had A's and B's, and I was like, why, why do I have ones and twos on my report card? But I ended up, like, my mom, like, called the school because she didn't know what it was either oh, yeah, or whatever. because that's, yeah. And, yeah, and so, she, like, they had to explain to her that, like, they do ones and twos and threes instead of A's and B's. And I was like, why? why? You know I just That doesn't make any sense me, to me. Low-key. A lot of things. All four me. years in high school, right? I never got a one for behavior. Have you ever gotten a one? Yeah. Really? Like, I, I get that I was never, like, the best. No, but you know what's really funny? What? I went on a two of the class that I got a one in. Car? Car and Miss Sutton. Okay, listen. Miss Sutton. <laughs> I love Miss Sutton. That's Miss Sutton's my one mother. Dog. Listen, the Sutton's one mother. But I never got a one ever. I've gotten a three once. Um, oh, in Goldie's class all four years. I got a one in Goldie's class. Listen, but here's the thing with Goldie. Goldie either loved me or hated yeah, me, depending on day by day. I mean, no, that's fair. Goldie was one of those teachers where... Um, you know, we would go from we were like, talking about Mr. Goldfinger was our um our DECA teacher. teacher, like uh business marketing something like that. Yeah. Um, I had Goldie all four years, and you had Goldie with me three, three out of four years. years. Yeah. Um, no, I only took him three years. So. Okay, so you so had, him, had you had him with, you. with me twice. Yeah, because yeah, um, it was the sophomore and senior. Oh yeah, yeah, the sports marketing class. I thought, yeah. Which, um, by the way, was one of the, my favorite classes I ever sports. Oh, that class was great. I remember the first quarter we worked on just we. I think we just did powerpoints on like stadiums and teams. Oh my god! Remember when we had we made um? Did we work together? Yeah, we made something about the the Miami Heat uh, stadium. We did some on American Airlines. Okay, no, I'm talking about a different project, but I remember what you're talking yeah. about. Because this one project I remember I worked with uh, Isaac and Wait, Lucky. no, that was... Um, oh, no, yeah, because we threw your name on that. No, the, the yeah, I know. But the thing that I'm talking about was senior year. Senior year, we had to do the, the Bayside Hot Dogs. Oh, dogs yeah, we killed that. that was live. But when it came to the drawing, we we, yeah. we literally, yeah, like, well, yeah. like, it was literally murdered. The whole the whole thing was Well, crap. no, we... um Wait, were we on? I, I don't know. Because we had my, my group. Maybe we were in different groups. My well, we group worked. Had... I was with Nick. Because I, I, was, I wasn't were, there Yeah, because I was with... um. Xavier, Xavier, and Dylan. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And, and um, and what's his name? Else. Um, the kid who ran track Alex. with the boot. No. No. Um, what's Steven. his name? No, 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 no. no, no. Kid who ran track with the boot, huh? Daniel. 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 Remember the guy who made the Eddie Chopper? No, TikTok? I, I know who Daniel is. Daniel has a podcast. Oh, hi, Daniel. Welcome to my podcast. Um, but no, the. Um, he was in your group, was he not? I don't think so. The name was in we, my group. We did Bayside Hot Dogs, and we had um, Xavier's sister. What did I do? We had Xavier's sister draw our, like, poster for us. It was great. Oh, my God. What did I do? See, my senior year was like a blur. Or half of my senior year. Oh, I'm not going to lie to you. I, it went by so much faster than I thought it would. My senior year to my to my junior year was like night and day. Yeah. My junior year, I failed a class for the first time ever, which, by the way... Never happened. Yeah. Isn't that the year I was at a higher grade than you in the class? Okay. I actually had a higher... You guys don't know, you, you right? Let, let me a, tell you something. And I, I started off high school... Hold on. You can't say what no. happened because that's illegal. You can't say what happened because that's illegal. I'm not going to, but I'm going to say this. I started off high school. Didn't give a fuck about grades. You know, I still really don't. <laughs> I don't think that... I'm getting there. Because I don't think that grades define a person as it is, you know? No, but it defines but, me to get a diploma. And that matters. That's dumb. Yeah. So, actually, I'll wait to tell the story. <laughs> um, no, but you yeah. Might be a good idea. Yeah, but no. Um, Deca class was definitely my favorite. We we did a, a sports draft in our. Oh, we our did. Do you remember that? Yeah. That was when we did our our we, baseball um, draft. Yeah, our baseball drafts. We did it in, and that was also the other. We ended up watching the Oklahoma Rhode Island. Oh yeah, March, March Madness, Madness on, on yeah, the on our big screen with Goldie. Yeah. Because like we were no, watching. No, who was his name? Jacob. The other Jacob. The big Jacob. He was next to me watching, oh, and he Evans. had it. Yeah. He had it on. No, not Evans. He was a senior. Wilson. No, he was a senior. Oh, senior. I don't think I don't know his last name, but I know Jacob Evans was in it, and Jacob Wilson obviously was in it. But he was a senior while we were a sophomore. He oh, sat to I the right know. of me. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. yeah. 
Because he had a, he had a game he had the Villanova game on his phone. And then and he, what's crazy is that was the year Villanova on the chip too. Yeah. And then he had an Xavier game, game on his shot. phone. Yeah. On the laptop. And then we had the Oklahoma game on the on the big screen. So I was sitting here watching three games at once and that was one of the coolest things ever. Because like uh, Goldie was one of those teachers where like we were done with all of our work or whatever and we started watching March Madness on our computers. And so the way like we sat was Goldie's desk is in the like, very yeah, back, the very of, back in like of the corner room, right? of the room. And so we sat directly in front of him so he could see all of our computers or whatever. So he sees that we're all watching March Madness. And he's like, he was watching it too, whatever, like not saying anything. He was just watching yeah, it. Yeah, he was watching on his like. And then he's laptop. just like, hey guys, just look up there. And then he puts the, the, Oklahoma the thing on the yeah. projector. And we start watching it's March so, Madness so in the middle of class. It was great. Yeah. But, yeah. But back to my story about our grades. So. I was trying to I, avoid it, but it's a, Huh? I said I was trying to avoid it, but it's a, No, it's not. It's not avoidable. Because I got a higher grade than you in class. I think I had an A. Would you have in that, that quarter? Mm. Was it a B? Oh, it wasn't a B, was it? Yeah, it was. Oh, was it a B? A B minus? No, it was an 86. Oh, okay. So, I had, I had a 96, I believe. Nope. Yeah, no, I did. Nope. Yeah, no, I did. Nope. Yeah, no, I, had I had a 96. You had a 91. No, I had a 96. You had a 91. A 96. I literally... I'll literally pull my pinnacle. I literally... I watched... <laughs> talk. I tried to put my pinnacle... So did I. It didn't work. Bro. No, it didn't work. But, yeah, it, like, no. it's it's like... Our, like, they, they our won't let you get right there anywhere, yeah. Yeah. You can still see your um your virtual counselor, but it's like only semester grades. It's not quarter grades. Uh, so. uh, but hey, um, crazy enough, my semester grade was still higher so, because I got an A on the exam and you got a D. But it's fine. On the exam? No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I didn't get a D on the exam. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I didn't take the exam. I exempted it. Yes, you did. He was the he was the one of the only two I could exempt. It was him and um. I just didn't show up to little bits, but it was his. Yeah, I do. Yes, it was. You got a C the other quarter. No, I did not. Yes, you did. I never had anything below a C in cars class. Yeah, you got below a, a C, B in cars not, class. No, you had a C and I had a B. Dude, I literally swear my I life. had a B both quarters. I, you had an A and a C. Okay. <laughs> That's how I know. Like, uh, like, yeah, okay. I, know. okay. I can't yeah, say that because a fair point. You know, again, legal reasons. I needed my lawyer <laughs> present, so, um, <laughs> Mr. Gustavo E. Francis. Anyways, but <laughs> is that your lawyer's name? Yeah. It's live. Actually, I don't remember. I don't remember who my lawyer was. Just the guy who uh, did the adoption for me. Yeah. Hey, I'm adopted. I guess. Yeah. You should name their podcast the Adopted. <laughs> the Adopters. No, the Adoptees. The adopt- yeah, that makes more sense because we haven't adopted anybody yet. Yeah, double. Should have. Yeah. Maybe triple E's though. They're all my little fucking curveball. Yeah. But anyways, I went into high school, <laughs> right? And oh, no. um, so I keep backtracking like this, but I went into high school. And the beginning of our sophomore year, right? Yeah. Yeah, first quarter or first semester of sophomore year, I wasn't allowed to play on the fall baseball team. Because I had a 1.8 GPA. Wow, it feels so weird to see that loud. Yeah, no, I had a 1.8 GPA. One. One. 1.8. Point. So I couldn't play baseball. So, <laughs> so basically, I couldn't play baseball and I had to go and I had to get a grade. He needed, he needed a two to be eligible. I got a two point one the next semester, and I was able to play. So, any any care to uh, tell him tell the uh, the viewers why you ended up finally getting a uh, two point one? That was my sophomore year, so it wasn't because of car. It wasn't because of car. No, it wasn't because of Sutton. It was because of Sutton. No, it wasn't. We had a little class together, world history. You act like I don't kill history. So what class did did you have to get your grade changed in? Car history. The, okay, from, but listen. From a D. Okay, from a D. But listen. From a D. But listen. From a D. But listen. I'll give I'm you the D. You keep talking. From, listen. The only reason F. why I had an F, guys, right, is because there's a certain, there's a a certain, a certain <laughs> <F> boy. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, if you guys don't know, there's a certain thing I don't like to do when it comes to school, and it's the actual work that comes with school, right? I love school. Or anything that has to do with having to do it outside of the walls of school. Yeah, no, if it's in class, so you know, I'm killing it. I'm killing it, bro. Like a Marilyn Manson. But the second I leave the classroom, it's over. It's not getting done. It's not getting done. Like, realistically, like USA Test Prep. Oh, that's, that's, that's what USA started USA Test Prep might be. We had 26, right? It was 26 in, in total. We had tw- different, 26 different units to do on USA Test Prep, bro. And how many, how many in there were total? How many were there total? That one quarter, I didn't do any of them. Uh, I think nine. Or eight. There no, was ten. Eight. There was ten. 
Ten? Yeah. I didn't do any of them. Didn't do any of them. Because we had four, four, eight, and then ten. Because we had 26 in total. Yeah. Okay. If I can do math, I think that's 26. Four, You're four, eight, and ten. Right. Yeah, four, four, eight, and ten, twenty-six. So, yeah, I didn't do any of them. And that's what led to the whole situation. I was failing that class. It was bad. It was very bad. That yeah. class, that class in itself was oh first of all interesting. I love coach, coach Carl literally made us throw like paper towel balls across the room at each other like, paper towel balls yeah like paper was it paper towels i think it was paper towels or no it might have been I think it was stuff. napkins either way it's it's the same thing a paper towel and a napkin is the same thing didn't i get a higher grade in that class though yeah did i graduate with a gpa two full point tyrenders <laughs> <laughs> almost two almost two you got a 2.8 i had a 4.9 2.9 I, yeah, I had a four point six. But so. guys, guys, look at that! I brought it up from a one point, a one point eight to a two point nine. That's wow. actually, it's impre- That's that's impressive. Wow. To bring it up two point or one point one points in three years is hard. It's crazy what happens when you take easy class. Or when you, yeah, we'll just say when I take easy classes. I'm definitely uh, not. Wow. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How um, many APs did you take in high school? Did you take any? What's an AP? No. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think on your wrist? No, I, I actually... Like a watch? <laughs> no, I actually was wondering. I don't know if you took any. No, I didn't take any. I would have college credits for it. <sighs> yeah, no, I would have failed. I, I, I took 13. Don't do that. Don't do not do that. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend even taking one. Honestly, no, I didn't I, take one and I feel perfectly fine. I quite honestly... I feel more accomplished than anybody. Honestly. I have self-diagnosed sleep problems from not being able to sleep because of 13 AP classes. Here's my thing with self-diagnosis. I also took stuff. five in a year, and that's not a good idea. I think self-diagnosis shit is, like, bullshit. Diagnostics? Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Because I see, like, that shit on, like, TikTok, and, like, girls post that shit all the time. Oh, my God, I'm so quirky. Like, I have anxiety. Like, just because TikTok said you do a pen tap and you move your leg a lot doesn't mean you have anxiety. No, I mean... Like, same thing with ADHD. Like, that's the most common self-diagnosed so, thing. The thing that angers me the most is there's so many people out there who actually have it actually have it and then the symptoms get dumbed down because so many people think they they have it it. like someone will think they have adhd because they go like this all the time yeah like Like, no like you might just have a lot of yeah yeah but like but there's you don't it just it makes it for the people who actually have it make it seem that much less um important or yeah, impactful just, on their lives like just degrading because it just doesn't you know what i mean it's like and uh, there's there's no need for that i feel like, like adhd and depression are the two biggest ones like well okay there's there's a a difference between being sad and, and being, being depressed. depressed no 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 there's even a difference between being depressed and having clinical depression yeah no definitely you can be depressed for you know, a day, a week, whatever, because something happened to you, traumatic, that's fine. That's yes. okay. Like, yeah. understandable. Like, Honestly, you can say, like, I'm depressed. You can I say you're depressed. Okay. That's fine. But if your you, fish dies that you, you knew for a week. You have depression. Like, dude, you can't be like, oh, my God, I have so much depression right now. Like, if you are depressed, that is different than having depression. depression. It's, it's so different. Having depression is such a crazy mental illness that people don't yeah. understand. They, they don't understand the actual, crazy. like, science behind it. doesn't behind. make any sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, you, there's like, so much more to it than just being upset yeah no, it's just no and it, it's insane honestly because people throw that term around so much like mental illness like depression isn't an actual problem <laughs> but like it's funny that yeah, i thought so you're welcome. but like it's honestly like it, it it's it's depressing how like sure. overused and thrown it gets it's just it's honestly sad because it's like you know then yeah i feel like people should just educate themselves no, for sure and i the biggest thing is there's so many just outside you know, people who hear something and they just instantly think that they know what's going on. Yeah, like they think they're WebMD. And that's exactly, and it's that's not. that's not it. And by the way, WebMD yeah. might be the stupidest. stupidest thing. And it's stupid. honestly like it's, worse than Wikipedia, and that's saying so something. bad. No, it's so bad. Like it's bad because you'll go on thinking, "Oh my god, I have a headache." Nope, you have stage four leukemia. Exactly. Like, like anything, like oh my god, my pinky toe hurts. You, you have need bone to cancer. It. Yeah, it's you have bone cancer. <laughs> Cut it off. Amputated. Honestly, do it yourself. Cut it off. Yeah, just go home, get a knife, put it in boiling like, water, and... Actually, that's so yes. much worse for you if you put it in boiling yeah. water. That's terrible. Disaffected. because No, because the, the boiling water will... Like, if boiling water touches, like, a a bone, it can disintegrate. Doesn't matter. It's gone anyways. 
Well, no. Okay, so when you cut something off, right? Okay, so yeah, so so gone. cut your arm off here, right? Right here, it's gone. This piece is gone. It's gone. This part is gone. Yeah. But this piece is still here, and the bone still sticks out, right? So if water wait, touches so the bone from me... that side, wait, 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 wait. it disintegrates. So if, well, I, it if I cut straight through my arm, the bone is sticking out. If you cut straight through your arm right here, okay? Okay, well, your diagram, waist is different. Okay. okay, okay. You cut straight through your arm right here, okay? Directly straight through your arm. Okay. You literally go straight down. Everything from the right's gone. To the left, you have the flesh. Yeah. You have the inside of your arm, so you're yeah. gonna have like your veins and all that stuff. And, the, and, then, and then your, your bone. bone is still there. Yeah, but it's not sticking out. No, but but what I'm saying is the bone is at the very edge, which okay. water, if boiling water hits it from the knife going straight down, it can start to disintegrate your bone away. Okay. I mean, I understand that. And there, which, there's your daily medical lesson with Logan. Which brings me to um my, another another thought I've had. Right. I still talk about the football trade, but yeah, go on. I mean, if you want to talk about that right now, you can. Oh, you're good. Hi. It's Jack there. It's just Sarah Jack. Hey, Jack. Oh my god, he's there. He's there. He's oh, there. hi, Jack. Hi, Jack. baby boy. He's hard. He's hard. If you guys, okay. So, should, hi, I, should I like, tell him the setup right now? The setup is... Should I introduce, introduce myself? myself? Fuck, you want my me to slut. talk about you for you? How about, about you? how about we have Tarbit give you an intro and then you speak? Like, have You're Tarbit like, introduce like, you. Like, introduce you as whatever. And then you speak out. Alright, so you want me to introduce you? Yeah. So, he's gonna introduce you. Yeah? Okay. Yes. He's gonna introduce you, and then when he pauses, you speak. Alright, so... Oh my no, god. No, hold on. Wait, we're gonna do this in, like, a general way, Okay. Keep, don't put your, or, like, have your hands out, right? But then when you want him to, like, when you're done and you want him to speak, close your hands. So do, do okay, this, so like, like do this, and, and then when you're done, do this. And then, so, Jack, as soon as he does this, you can speak. Okay. 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 So, basically, uh, a lot of you may know uh, about Damien, right? Which is a whole story in that's, itself. That's not a good But I met this kid through Damien. And I, I, I would say we've gotten pretty close. I've stayed with him. I stayed at Damien's house, and I met this kid. And we played Call of Duty from, I think, 7 in, oh in the afternoon God. until 10 in the oh, fucking was morning. Horrible. It was the longest night of Call of Duty I think I've ever played. But it was also one of the most fun nights. We did everything. Literally, anything in the game, you name it, we've done it. It was insane. And me and him bonded very strongly over that. So I love Jack. Jack is possibly gonna move down with us to be our next roommate in our house when we uh when we get it we're moving for college so he'll be coming in from new jersey to live with us and uh i don't know i love Sorry. this kid Carry today. On. i think he's uh i think he's a great kid so oh i love jack jackie poo favorite he- uh, my girlfriend's not allowed to hear this favorite person in the world minus her <laughs> all right cut that and edit <laughs> you bet your sweet ass i am and that's all right. right now. Uh, I love you, Jack. Obviously, he can't be here because he's still in school. Jersey. In Jersey. Um, dirty Jersey, but we don't talk about that. And yeah, hopefully, he'll be down here with soon with us. And go ahead, Jack. Close all your. Oh, oh, don't you worry, boys. When I come down, we're going to have a jolly good old time. All right. Of course. Of course. And uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, J- Jacob, you know, stand up guy, you know, real stand up guy over there. Logie Wogie sitting right there. Ooh, he's looking fine as hell. As always, but yeah, I am I I I'm the mastermind of all of this. Yeah, he does uh, yes, all the editing, the technology, you know, yes, the the fixing the mic, oh, the camera. Oh, if the technology was up to this kid, you guys wouldn't be here. Listen, thing, I listen, promise. Hey guys, I'm I'm you guys wouldn't be I'm like a 65 year old when it comes to certain things. Like right now, like I don't know if you guys understand, OBS is recording um software. Yes. Yeah, and I I do it a little bit for when I stream on Twitch. Jacob underscore Tarbit. Uh, self is still there. Um, but uh, so we use it when I use like stream and all that when I play video games. But when I play video games, I had to set it up once, and then after that I had to start, yeah, start and then put a title and that's it. Hit end when I'm done streaming. So it's like simple. It's like a process. The second I start, this podcast is a lot different. You got to do a lot more for that thing. Yeah. So here I had to set up microphones, set up the webcam differently, had to bring my laptop out. Do a whole lot of different things that I normally wouldn't have to do. So, of course, I got exposed to a lot of different things. But thank God Jack is um, very techni- technologically, technologically advanced. advanced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. First, I'm very technologically challenged, um, to say the least. So, 
it's great that we have him. He's a great person to have. You know, part of the the team here at Chestnut Checkers, and. <laughs> <laughs> at the chestnut checkers podcast by the way not at chestnut checkers we are the, oh, we chestnut, are the chestnut checkers, checkers. podcast because there's another chestnut checkers podcast out there but personally you know the, they're, they're like they're like, like here t-h-e like they're like here and we're like up here like they're like, literally playing checkers while we're playing chess so just know who you want to go do to. they have a checkerboard table no they don't didn't think so by the way we have a checkerboard table yeah i haven't said anything about that you guys can't see it too much but you know it's we're kind of it's in pretty big decent. You know, it's like a Cracker Barrel table. It's it's insane. Oh, bro. Can I say that or will I get canceled? No, it's a white slur. So uh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> oh, yeah. Jack, you might want to cut that. Just <laughs> <laughs> maybe just that last but, just um, that last sentence. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, no, I'm very Republican though, so it's. Uh, yeah, cut that too. <laughs> cut Trump, that too. I'm just gonna Trump 2020. Yeah, <laughs> and that one. Cut that one too. Thanks. Uh, okay. Spotify premium. Hey, all right. <laughs> so on that note, no, 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 no. Right, okay, I want to talk about something. Yeah, that's what I say. And on that okay. note, we'll transfer uh, back to the sports world of uh, football. Some crazy stuff went down today. Crazy. Okay. Like eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock this morning or noon, whatever. Yeah, right. Um, I get a notification on my phone. Dolphins finesse the world. I'm a Dolphins fan. Chris Greer, right there, the general manager for the Miami Dolphins. Might be he hoodwinked everybody. One of the most intelligent individuals in, that I've ever seen in the sports world. Oh, he really. Let did. me get some stats up for you guys very quickly. So this morning, the Dolphins made a trade with the San Francisco 49ers. Zach Wilson had his pro day, the BYU quarterback. John Lynch, who is the GM for the 49ers, was at this pro day when this trade went down. And so what happened is the Dolphins traded away the third overall pick that they had from Houston in the Laramie Tunsil trade. And in return, they got the 12th overall pick in this year's draft. A 2022 third-round pick, I believe, and a 2022 and 2023 first-round pick from the San Francisco 49ers. And a lot of people were scratching their heads. You know, it's obviously fantastic, fantastic value for the Dolphins. But... You also don't know how it's going to work out because the Dolphins were looking to get an elite playmaker in the draft or, you know, a generational offensive tackle prospect in Panay Sewell. Personally, I think at three, they had to trade back somewhere, but a lot of people thought 12 was too far. So I kind of, I, I sent our friend Brady a text earlier, probably 20 minutes before the second trade happened, saying something tells me the Dolphins are going to trade with the Eagles to get back to six. The six just seemed like a perfect spot, you know, if the first pick, four picks are all quarterbacks. And then after what happened to Joe Burrow last year, the Bengals have to protect that man. Joe Burrow's a generational talent, oh, and yeah. you have to protect him, right? For sure. They're going to go offensive tackle. Panay Sewell will be off the board at five, and you can book it right now, okay? If right. you go six, the Dolphins have any receiver they want in the draft. And in my opinion— Devonta Smith. No. In my opinion, the receivers in this class might be the deepest in any class that you've seen since... Odell's? Wow, it's been a long time. It's been a really long time. Honestly, pro... I like Odell's. Odell's the Calvin class. Ridley, maybe? The Calvin Ridley draft? Uh, you're saying? Maybe? Um, You know, a lot of people thought... The draft last year and the receivers were going to be super deep. C.D. Lamb, you know, Jerry Judy. I love Jerry Judy. I think Jerry Judy's a great route runner. He, he has to, to right? Field. Yep. Yeah, it's a school rate bias. Actually. Um, And, you know, so they didn't perform as well as, you know, they could have. Obviously, rookie of the year, in my opinion. Well, Justin Herbert put up crazy rookie numbers. Oh, yeah, no, he balled. But Justin Jefferson <sighs> put up 1,400 yards as a receiver with Kirk Cousins throwing him the football. That's, that's hard to do. That's hard. That's and really he had hard. half the target share being taken away by Adam Thielen, who's another you know great wide receiver. Who wanted to be a dentist. He did want to be a dentist. He went to D3 school in the middle of Wisconsin. Go Crazy. Uh-huh. Um, but <clears throat> so the Dolphins need to get receiver, right? Tua, our offensive line realistically is, is going to shape out. We're just really young. 
you know, you're, you're not going to be able and either you trade or if you're going to draft offensive line, you have to wait for them to develop because you're not, an offensive lineman. It's kind of like a uh, corner. You know what I mean? They're not going to be great their first year in the league. Yeah. So they had to get back up. They had to get up somewhere. They need to get a receiver. Devontae Parker, they just signed Will Fuller. They need a third receiver because, unfortunately, Preston Williams is extremely injury prone and Jakeem Grant just can't catch a football. He's a fantastic returner, but he can't catch the ball. So it's just not, you know, not good. And so what ended up happening is the Dolphins then took the 12th pick that they had and then bet on themselves and traded away their own 2022 first round pick. So they keep the 49ers, but gave away their own. And I believe a, they also gave up a fourth round pick from this year. I'm sorry. A fourth round pick from this upcoming draft. And they moved up from 12 to six. And it was kind of a fourth and fifth pick swap. So they gave the Eagles a fourth round pick and the Eagles gave them back a fifth. So they really keep the same amount of picks. Um, obviously, it was two this year for two this year and one next year. Yeah. Um, so they moved up from 12 to 6. And in total, they, I believe they picked up, moving from, from 3 to 6, picked up two first-round picks, gave up their own. Um, well, technically, they got three first-round picks. But, you know, they, they gave up the third, got the sixth, two extra first-round picks, gave up their first-round pick from next year, absolutely fleeced the world, yeah, right? So Chris Greer is a mega mind. That dude is – he's done some Genius. stuff in the last two years in the offseason for the Miami Dolphins that will change their franchise right. for the next 10 years. No doubt. Um, you know, obviously it's all draft, and, you know, you have to hit on your picks still. But personally, you know, a lot of people were, you know – knocking the Dolphins draft class last year and as much as their first round wasn't great you know I think two is our guy I think two is the quarterback and I think that they've shown you that this offseason um and I think he's shown the willingness to want to get better and improve as well this offseason Austin Jackson a, a huge developmental guy you know going into his last year of college football he didn't have an offseason because he donated his blood marrow to his sister which I believe is his sister, which is crazy, crazy, right? Like that's extremely admirable. Yeah. So he's going to be a developmental guy anyway, because he didn't have that extra off season that you have in college that a lot of other guys did. And by the end of the year, he was actually playing really well. If you look at his stats and look at all the numbers, he played really well. And then what the Dolphins did really well is like the later rounds, they drafted extremely well. Brandon Jones played a, a lot of snaps for the Dolphins last year. Raekwon Davis, whenever Christian Wilkins couldn't play, stepped in and stopped the run really well. I mean, you know, obviously Christian Wilkins is, in my opinion, one of the better run stoppers in the league, right? And especially if you're running a 3-4 and you're only going to have three, um, you know, defensive linemen and your your outside linebacker is rushing the passer, you need a guy like Christian Wilkins to just plug up the middle, right? So they were really hit the second half, I would say, of their draft. You know, their first three picks were, you know, Tua and then Austin Jackson and then Noah Igbenogany, which still, crazy name. Whatever. I mean, okay. (laughs) But he just, you know, I honestly, I'm trying to figure out completely off topic, but what's a a weirder name? Noah Igbenogany from last year or Jeremiah uh, Wusu Koromoa from this year, the linebacker from Notre um, Dame? The guy, the four-star wide receiver is going to LSU. It's like the coldest. Oh, the coldest, uh, not Watkins. Is it the coldest it's, Watkins? I, I, don't I don't know. know. I saw it on Sports Center today. No, he's, there's also another crazy name. Auburn Corner, I believe. His name is Smoke Monday. That's dope. All right. I'm going to give one football name. I'm going to go switch to baseball. It's one of my favorite names. Uh, So the football name, I will say, is Spencer Rattler. Spencer, the, speaking the guy of from which, Pinnacle. Speaking of which, book it's it. Crazy. Book it. Spencer Rattler's winning the Heisman. He's crazy. Spencer Rattler's gonna win the Heisman. I don't know. Spencer Rattler I, I personally would will love win to the Heisman because Nico Lamanian came from that school, and to see like that school continue to carry a legacy like that would be amazing. And I would love no. it. Spencer Rattler is winning the Heisman. Book it. Yeah, well, he's nuts. Either Spencer Rattler or Sam Howell. Personally, I would bet on Spencer Rattler. 
Sam Howell committed to FSU and then decommitted and went to UNC, so, like, screw that guy. But he's also extremely <laughs> talented and might go first overall if Spencer Rattler doesn't. Yeah. But both of those talented. guys are really nasty. That UNC football team is going to be insane. Yeah. If there is a team in the country who will beat DJ Uangalele and Clemson, which, by the way, again, crazy last name. name. Yeah. If there's any team in the ACC that will beat them, it's going to be UNC. Because Sam Howell is going to have to go out there and throw for 450 and five touchdowns, and just will light it up. Mm-hmm. And there's only one offense, in my opinion, in the league that can do that. I love FSU. We're not a football school anymore. Not at, like, I'm sorry. We're FSU's basketball. Got a, we're like, basketball honestly, baseball. Yeah, basketball and baseball school. Are. Speaking of which, they came back from a one nothing deficit today in the seventh inning. And uh, one on an Elijah Cabell, which, by the way, he you, know, crazy. you know his his hair? Yeah. He cut his hair and shaved. Oh, my God. Elijah Cabell is not Elijah Cabell anymore. If you guys don't know, like, facial hair on, like, like baseball like, players yeah. is, like, trademark. He I had a crazy flow, and now his hair looks like mine. Yeah. If you don't, so one of the most, like, like household names for baseball would say, like, Bryce Harper. Yeah. Like, he's one of the more well-known players. If you guys don't know, he looks like a complete caveman. His hair oh, now shit. goes down to here. And then he has a beard going down to here, right? Bryce Harper's gross. Though. Yeah, and he another that picture from spring training filling up oh his gas tank. Yeah, that's so, that's so funny. awesome. Because you know there are people just like us too, so it's pretty cool to see. Yeah. And you know, no, the weirdest thing was uh, Garrett Cole. You guys know Garrett Cole is one of the top top three pitchers in the league. Um, I would yeah. say him, Scherzer, and uh, Degrom, personally. Yeah. But so I'd say he's a top three pitcher in the league. In yeah, no in particular my opinion, order. in my opinion, definitely top two in the American League for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so regardless, if you guys don't know, he played on the Houston Astros, the cheating Astros. Um, and he had crazy flow, and he had a beard. And he had, um, I think, he, did he have a mustache going up here, too? I think I, he had something. I, don't, had know, something I don't know if I would call it a mustache, but yeah, it, he was, had a little it was something. something yeah. So if you guys don't know, it's Yankee tradition to have no facial hair. Oh, my God. Andrew so, McCutcheon, when he had to shave, yeah, was crazy. Yankees. So it's so weird, because the Yankees are heavy on tradition. Yeah. And it's so weird seeing these guys going with their well, own looks. They have looks. retired numbers. Yeah. 23, maybe. It's 1 through 9. Or 1 through 10 is retired. Yeah, and then they... Yeah. Adam Adevito, Adevito is the first person to wear zero. Yeah. Since, like, 2000. I believe they have, like, 22 retired numbers, which is crazy. Yeah. It's, like, you have, 1 through you 10. Know, 40 guys. Right? Um, 42. But... That's all I can think of right now. I think it's, like, 13, 14. No, yeah. Uh, what was what was Nicky Mantle? I think he was... Is it not like three? I don't know. I'll look it up. I don't know. But still, you know what I mean? Like. All right, yeah. So, the personally, like, the Yankees, you know, they have a history of winning, obviously. But it's just so weird to see, like, players go in and, like, have to shave. Oh, for sure. It's like, because, you know, you see these players, like, every day, even if you don't watch baseball. Yeah. You know, like, I, I really don't watch that much baseball. I guarantee but... you any female watching this right now either knows who Bryce Harper or Chris Bryant is. Like, you just have Oh, to. Chris Bryant. Okay. Chris Bryant Chris is asked, one right? of the most annoying players in, the, oh, in baseball yeah. for one reason and one reason only. Anthony Rizzo. You can't make a player your poster boy who's not good at baseball. Okay? Chris Bryant was really good in 2016, right? And that's when they made him their poster boy. He was everywhere, right? Everywhere. But ever since then, ever since then, I don't think he's hit over 280. I don't think he's been healthy for a full season. And I don't think he's had a good defensive war since then. Okay, that's a freezing cold pit. Um, he wow. hasn't been good in a while. And they I... still try to make him the cover boy because, listen, they want to reach a broader audience. And, you know, he's an attractive guy. So they made him the cover boy for a while. Okay. I'm if, gonna you look, if you look, what was that I one was show? I was fully on board. I was fully on board with where this was going until you said – did he, you can't make him your cover boy because he doesn't want to be your cover boy. He's the same as Mike no. Trout. You can't have Mike Trout as the co- Mike Trout is the greatest baseball player that I've personally ever He's seen. He's going to be of all time if he keeps it up. But I I think by the yes. time he retires, he will be the best player of all time. Yeah. No Easily. question, right? No doubt about it. But the issue with Mike Trout being the He's poster boring. boy of baseball is that he doesn't want to be. He wants to just go out there and just do his thing. Yeah. He wants to go out there, hit 330, hit 35 bombs, like, 120 RBIs, and have to leave after 162 yeah. games because the Angels can't make the playoffs Every and year. call it a day. Like, that's, that's what okay. he wants to do. That's the problem. That's the problem right there, right? Baseball's boring because the best players are boring. 
right? Don't get me wrong, baseball is fun to play, hard to watch because of that reason only. You go and that's watch. That's why I love what Tatis is doing so much. I think yeah, Tatis is one watch of the best players. things for baseball. Trevor Bauer. Tatis, uh, Machado, Kershaw, Bueller, um, Bauer, like you said, and Bryce Harper, Javi Baez. They oh, go Javi and Baez play with yeah. so much swag and emotion oh, bro. that, you know, like, I, that gets me hype as a fan. I, I may so not watch a game. So I'll go on Instagram, Tatis. see Fernando Tatis Jr. or Tim Anderson throw a bat 800 feet, and I'm like, Whoa! I'm horny. That's hot. Like I like that. Let me let me chi- let me chime in here. Let me chime in go here. Ahead, go ahead. Yes, sir. Oh, love the conversation. I'm just gonna put my own take on it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um. Yes, the flashy players like that, like the Jose no, Batista no, flip. No, you know. Oh, that was live. Um. Sam Dyson, fuck you. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. No, that was. Pretty but good. Mike Trout, hundred percent the best baseball player to ever grace this planet and nobody knows because he is a very humble guy he's a very humble guy and he lets his game show and he doesn't need to be flashy he doesn't need to be flashy because he's fucking insane yeah no but like that's my thing they need i i don't get it i need attitude right i'll never forget this one game fernando rodney was pitching against the angels the eighth inning he does his little celebration you know he does at the end of the game that, and he did it, bro. and he did it to end the eighth in the, inning. End of the eighth inning, and the they were down. The the Angels were only down by two. Oh no, down by one. Right, they're down by one. Yeah, one. They're down by one. Oh and, yeah, because then Pujols hit the yeah, double and then tied and the then, game and did it back. That's the yeah. That yeah. what made me. That was like, thank you, Trout. That's what I love to see. Pujols came up, hit a double after Trout got it. He beat out a single. Yeah, so Trout, single. Trout beat out stole a field second, goal, stole second, and then got up and, and did then, it. Yeah. And then Pujols hit a ball down the right field line, yeah. you know, scored, and then they both did it. Pujols is 88 years old. He's going to die soon. God forbid, you know. I, wow. But, like, oh. listen, he's not nowhere near his old form. Him and Mickey, you know. But like, I'm looking for wood. Either I can't way, find that. We can't. Either way, I love them both to death. But seeing emotion out of two of the most, like, inspirational players of all time, frankly, got me just, like, Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, that's like, I no, love that. Yeah. Because, like, he needs to be the cover of baseball, but he won't be because he's boring. Oh, I have to talk about something. Hold on. Wait a minute. Go ahead. Spit it out. One of the biggest things that I've ever seen in baseball that has genuinely made me mad Fernando Tatis and the Padres the Grand Slam. are up 10 to the 1 Grand Slam, yeah. <laughs> in the eighth inning against the Texas Rangers. And the Texas Rangers have not been good. Since the Bautista bat flip, Nelson, right? No, since Nelson so Cruz. it's just it's just a problem with that, right? Well, okay, they went yeah. to the World Series a few years, whatever, right? Cruz error, and then that, since since they blew up and the Bautista yeah. homer and they've the Bautista rebuilding. bat flip, yeah, no, the they've best. been ass. If you guys like, don't know, ass. there was um there was a slide in the second base where Jose Bautista went in a little bit rough, which personally I like to see. You know, because you're trying to get on tra- and do whatever yeah, you can for your team. You're trying to break it up. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I like to see that, personally, you know? And it always stirs up controversy, which I like. Because as a player, if I'm getting slid into, you're not getting back up. You're, like, you're staying down there. <laughs> you like yeah. controversy. Huh? Like, oh, yeah, I like controversy. controversy. Crazy. But, you know, like, that's a thing. So he went up, and the Texas Rangers evidently had the best hit of the year. But it wasn't by bat. It was by Rufino Doris. Doris' fist. Yeah, fist his... hitting Jose Batista's face. Yep. <laughs> And hit tracks actually had the the stat on that. It came off 110 miles per hour off the fist to the knuckles. Impressive. Impressive. Yeah, it was honestly, actually like the transfer of power from yeah, like back the, to the straight. Torque he created honestly it might have been the best. Swing maybe he had if he actually year. implemented that into his he actual swing, he might hit over 200 for once. Honestly, maybe. But, I think that year he ended up hitting like 186, yeah. too, which is really insane to me. Yeah, no, that's the hardest hit. How do you go 100? Obviously, I'm not an MLB player, and I, you know, don't get me wrong. I got the bat taken out of my hands after my song. Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. But I'm not wow. saying that I can go up there and hit 300 every year as an MLB player right this second. Shot. But I'm saying if I played my whole life, I, I get that there's slumps. I get that everyone has their slumps. You've been in a slump for your whole career. Make up your damn mind. You you play subpar defense. You can't hit the ball. No. You don't throw like Carlos Correa. You don't field like Brandon Crawford. What are you good for? Speaking if you weren't Crawford, on a shit just, team, you weren't going to do anything. I was just watching the uh, USA WBC Which, by the highlight. way, is the last time I think I've seen Brandon Crawford actually make contact. 
Honestly, maybe, but he also made two errors in the Dominican Republic game that a lot yeah, of people forget uh, because yeah. they ended up winning anyway because yeah. the Adam Jones catch on a uh, which by the save by the way was still Machado, insane. absolutely insane. Honestly, one of the best catches I've ever seen. Maybe ever. the trout jumping over the wall in no, Angel Jim Stadium. Edmonds catch. That was okay, Jim Edmonds the Jim Edmonds catch. catch yes, yeah. but. Mike Trout quite literally had his right hand on the top yeah, of the wall and his other hand catching, up. Catching. Straight out of a fucking game. That's insane. Um, back to what I was saying, though, about the, the Tatis homer, right? You can't want the game to be fun and yeah, then pan to one of your best up-and-coming Stars. young players and have him be mad that he just hit a grand slam for his team, who, by the way, is in a pennant race, yeah. right? You can't pan to him being disciplined for hitting a grand slam up 10-1. Which, you know what? If you're going to be butthurt about him hitting a grand slam up 10-1, don't throw a 3-0 fastball down, down the dick. dick. Like, just don't do it. If you throw a 3-0 fastball down the yeah, dick and that match goes 450, you can't be mad. And if that, if that bat throws gets straight up in the air it don't matter if that bag gets on straight up in the air you gotta watch it drop yeah, down and, you can't and if it down. bounces your eyes gotta go up and back down with it yeah if you just got taken yard 450 that's on you don't throw a bad pitch and they won't be able to celebrate personally my thing so. is if you're gonna play with emotion you gotta be able to dish it and take it you know for sure yeah like you you see trevor bauer doing his one-eyed thing talking his shit yeah, but and when he then, gives up home runs, you don't see him complain. Yeah, it's like he the did. Same he thing literally the, went on Twitter Anderson after he gave up a yak. I forgot to who. I think it might have been Matt Olson against the Athletics. Matt Olson, you know, did one of these. You know, hit it through the bat. Matt Olson, by the way, one of the most underrated first. Oh, for sure. League, but, you know, he gave on. a little bat flip, and then he went on Twitter, Trevor Bauer, and said, "Great swing, love the energy, nice flip." Yeah, you know, simple as that. You don't gotta be a pussy. And which, by the way, the year before that, the whole home run happened with Tatis. If I don't recall, no, two years. It's that was the great. Jason Grilly event, where oh my god, yes, they, they, the the yeah. Rangers were up, I think eighteen to four. They had their normal closer in to secure a W. That's Stanton. Stanton struck out to end the the eighth inning, and. Jason like, Grilly goes, let's, let's go, go. you're trash. Like, he's like screaming, you know. Get off me. Sounds like I say hooded. Yeah. Uh, say Thomas. Yeah. But, you know. Embarrassing. We had to retell that story. Yeah, we do. You know. But then again, then the next night, the Marlins go out there. And this just game is. No lube right in. <laughs> 22 to 4. 22 to 4. And Stanton goes up. Not even Two close. run home run. Stares at Jason Grilly. Again, they're. Regular closer Does when they're this. down by 18, throws, throws the bat, bat like this. mocks Jason Grilly, goes like, let's, let's go, go, baby, let's go, and does a straw. You know what? No, just like that. Everyone forgets. Well, then, when the crybaby of the MLB decides, hey, I don't like that, you can't do that, I don't like being disrespected, then it's a problem. Like, okay. But listen, if you're going to rebuild your team for 29 years and three. And not be able to have at least one star when your best player in your team is Joey Gallo. When your best player strikes out more than he's able to touch the baseball. It's Joey Gallo has hit more home runs than doubles, which still astounds me. More home runs than singles, but yeah. Oh, yeah, more home runs than singles, which still well, astounds me. Well, not anymore, but yeah. Yeah, well, going into at last the, year. At the beginning of last year, yeah. Yeah, which regardless. And when your best pitcher was Corey Kluber, who didn't throw a pitch for you in the last five years. Yeah, like that's just insane. I mean, yeah. I mean, okay, honestly, last thing I'm going to say, we got to end this, uh, you know, we've been talking yeah, for like almost an hour. hour mark, yeah. Last thing I'm going to say is you can't have, you know, excitement brought into the game. If you can't take if it. If the, the people who want to bring the excitement into the game are playing the game with people who don't want that. And you yeah. can't do that. Baseball is changing. As much as people don't want to admit it, Baseball's not the same. You're going out there and you're drinking beers and being in it, like, you know, just doing whatever with, or watching you know what I mean? Team, it's different, right? Baseball's turning into a game that kids can watch. Baseball's turning into a game that isn't boring. Like, let the kids play movement. Exactly. You know, let the, let the kids let the be kids the kids play. on the field. Let the yeah, kids let be, be who they are on the field. Personally, I'm at my, I, I'm an asshole on the mound. I'm a complete piece of shit if I'm on the mound, right? But... I'm at my best, 
if I'm talking my shit and staring you down after every strikeout. If I K you up and I watch you Letting walk you back it. to the dugout and blow you a kiss when you get back to the dugout, Letting take it. it. But you know what? If, if the next up, time you get up and you take me yard and you do the same thing, yeah, take it. Okay. All, by all means. That's fine. Because I'm doing the same thing. We're just out there trying to have fun. We're just out there trying to do the best for ourselves. When I hype myself up and I'm getting adrenaline going and I'm just dealing and I'm blowing you kisses and telling you to go walk back to the dugout and keep a seat warm for me, I'm going to be doing my best. But I also, I like the competition. If you're going to take me yard, if you're going to, you know, hit a stand-up double. You earned it. You earned it. Congratulations. If you throw that bat up in the air, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Because if I K you up, I'm going to watch you walk back to the dugout. Listen. It's just how it is. If I gave up a home run, realistically, I may not watch the bat flip, but I'm going to ask for a new ball. I'm not going to go cry. I'm going to go back and I'm going to try to strike the next guy out. Yeah, exactly. But that's well, just I'm not saying I'm going to watch the bat play. flip, obviously. Yeah. But you know what I mean? yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to sit there and just admire, wow. Shit, that was a good <laughs> bat flip. Honestly, like Son that, that bat might have gone yo, further than yo, the ball. Jesus. Yo, yo, kid, teach me that one real quick. Stop a second right there. Go grab the bat. Show me yo, wait, <laughs> how'd you do that again? Like, did you go from the bottom? Flip? Honestly, good. Like, you go from the knob, or what did you do? Okay, good <laughs> shit. No, but, yeah. but I mean, like, you always, you're going to have those guys who, baseball is the game of, you're never going to go, you know, Jack, what, like, how we started this at the beginning. Jack Leiter, right, yeah. will give up a home run this year. I can guarantee it. I don't think he has yet. But he will give up a home run this year. It's I inevitable. It, right? No one's going to have gonna a perfect season. Somebody's gonna get. He's gonna miss a pitch, leave a three zero fastball down Maybe the dick, and it's not. gonna go into the. You know what? It's gonna go to the stands. That's the thing of baseball. It's a game of failure, and it's it's insane. You know, you can make the best pitch of your life, and they can make an even better swing out of complete and, yeah. bullshittery randomness. It doesn't matter, and it, and if it goes out, the best pitch you've out. ever just thrown is just terrible. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, honestly, I think I think this is a good place to end it. I hope you. I. I hope personally that you guys have enjoyed this first episode of the Chestnut Checkers podcast. That's why. I'm sure, you know, my co-host over here is uh, feeling the same way. Um, yeah, my co-host. I'm my the captain co-host. now. I'm the captain now. Um, okay. But no, okay. genuinely overall, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I don't know when this is going out. Hopefully Monday, Monday, if possible. If so we'll Jackson have another episode out for you guys on a Wednesday, hopefully. That, uh, and, um, you know, Friday. obviously... If this is going out on a Wednesday, then the next episode will be out on Friday. Whatever. You guys know our schedule, like I said earlier. So um, if this is going out on a Wednesday and we want to do a question and answers type thing on Friday, we will post polls on our story for you guys to ask us questions. And any questions you guys have for us that you might want us to answer, doesn't matter what it is. It could be, you know, a story you want us to tell. It could be something about a sport, you know, something about a current event that's going on in the world, period, right? Let us know. It can be just a stupid question. You guys just want to make us laugh and, you know, have yeah. everybody else laugh. That's fine. Um, if we can, we will, you know, shout your name out in the podcast if you guys want. But, uh, yeah, we really appreciate, I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.